the Triple H era finally begins. And while the script still had Vince McMahon's ketchup covered fingerprints, I did notice some changes. A brawl kicked off Monday Night Raw, there was no mention of the 24-7 championship, Theory got absolutely roasted, Roman said I want you to analyze everything that's going on here, your daddy's not here anymore. I feel like that's a bit deeper than just a wrestling promo, Triple H wanted to let the fans know things are going to be a bit different right now. Commentary felt a bit more loose, which is understandable when someone is not screaming in your ear. Promote Peacock! Promote Peacock, damn it! Got it. We got blood, and the commentators actually acknowledged it. Obviously, the more things change, the more they stay the same. We got a six man tag team match closing Monday night. Well, you gotta understand, this script was still probably written by Vince McMahon, approved by Vince McMahon. But we did get enough changes to let us know that things are changing. Obviously, changes will take time, but I'm feeling optimistic for the most part. We just gotta wait for every everything to conclude, WWE is about to get crazy. And oh boy, I hate seeing this right now. Dude, we're ready for TV 14. Before the show even kicks off, we're seeing a Logan Paul versus The Miz brawl. This is a personal rivalry, ladies and gentlemen. Weird choice, but I appreciate it. Like I've said, I want a WWE to show that it's going to be different, that's exactly what they did. This episode of Monday Night Truck kicked off with the Tribal Chief and the Bloodline. Acknowledge me. Roman says, Wise man, I don't f talking anymore. I told you it's gonna be bad. No Vince McMahon and the microphone cuts off. It felt like Vince McMahon is at home playing with a remote controller, just turning the sounds off. You'll retire with me, damn it. Heyman welcomes everyone to the island of relevancy. Heyman's microphone cuts out and Heyman says the sound guy must be from New Jersey and he could be the next guy to go. I know what's happening right here. Kevin Dunn is scared. So now Kevin is like, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm not gonna do anything. Do, do your own camera cuts. We'll see how easy it is. 59 camera cuts a minute. We'll see how it goes. Heyman says Sunday marks 700 days of Roman Reigns' style reign. This plays perfectly into Brock Lesnar who likes to piss on everyone's parade. Whether it's UFC or Undertaker's WrestleMania winning streak. And now he's gonna try to ruin Roman Reigns' party. Heyman compares the Roman Reigns vs Brock Lesnar rivalry to Stone Cold Steve Austin vs The Rock, Hulk Hogan vs Randy Savage. And it's time to end this. We see Theory and he makes the same point. You're forgetting something. I have the money in the bank briefcase. I'm the biggest threat at SummerSlam. Rain says you're gonna stop right there. You should acknowledge the tribal chief. I see you're a little nervous. We like him, Paul, right? He's alright. And then Roman Reigns tells Theory, your daddy's not here anymore. The crowd chants, daddy's boy and who's your daddy? Rain says if Theory keeps messing around, the tribal chief will be his daddy. I run the garden now. The bloodline leaves and one of the Usos takes a cheap shot. Theory responds by attacking Us with a briefcase but Roman Reigns doesn't allow Allow the Usos to respond. Now, obviously, it's really hard to get excited about Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar again. I believe Theory adds something to it. I mean, at least there's a question: Will he cash in? At least we're getting something different. We all know Roman Reigns is winning this match, so it's really not that intriguing. But the question of Theory cashing in. That's kinda interesting, I guess, and this was a nice way to kick off Monday Night Raw, especially the, you know, your dad is not here anymore. Then Theory talks about being Mr. Money in the Bank again and gets interrupted by Drew McIntyre. So we got Drew McIntyre versus Theory. This ended pretty quickly because we got the Brawling Brutes interrupting, starting a brawl, the match ended in DQ, Bobby Lashley for the save, and this turned into a tag team match. Theory and Sheamus versus Bobby Lashley and Drew McIntyre. Again, these are the kind of things I want less in the WWE. I hate this formula. One-on-one, -on -one, DQ finish, and it's either a tag team match or six-man tag team match from there. It needs to end. I'm so sick of it. Although I gotta say, the match itself was actually very entertaining. Really fun to watch. It probably has nothing to do with Vince McMahon leaving, but... It just felt like these guys were having a lot of fun. I don't know, maybe for the talent as well, 
it's a good day. Dolph Ziggler was watching the match. Theory was going for his finisher but got distracted by Dolph Ziggler. We got the Hurt Lock and Drew McIntyre and Bobby Lashley took the W. But it's a tradition right now. Every damn week, Theory eats a super kick. Not from Dolph Ziggler this time though. We got a double super kick by the Usos and Roman Reigns sends a warning. With Vince McMahon out of the picture, now it's even more interesting. Will Theory get a push? I don't know, he was Vince's guy. It's time to celebrate Rey Mysterio's 20th anniversary of being the WWE superstar. Got a nice car? We got a familia? We got Dom? Aliyah? Angie, it's party time. Dolph Ziggler reveals that the reason why he attacked Theory is because he wants to teach him a lesson. He feels like Theory is being way too confident. AJ Styles agrees and he respects Dolph Ziggler for that. They got interrupted by the Alpha Academy. They talked some crap and uh, Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles got challenged to a tag team match and they're obviously in. I really love this idea of Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles being a tag team. Maybe AJ Styles right now should be a singles competitor. I would really love to see him in a major storyline. Other than that, I love this idea. Two of my favorites, for whatever reason, they have so much chemistry. One of my favorite SmackDown Live matches from 2016 or 17 is actually AJ Styles versus Dolph Ziggler in the main event. Rey Mysterio was celebrating his anniversary. He thanked Edge, Kurt Angle, Eddie Guerrero. He got a great response from the crowd. He got emotional. This was a lovely little segment. Now, obviously, they got interrupted by the Judgment Day because the scheduled match was the Mysterios versus the Judgment Day, Damien Priest and Finn Balor. We did get the match and it was fun, although I gotta say, I'm not happy with the result. Judgment Day doesn't feel special anymore and all they need right now is some W's. Unfortunately though, the Mysterios defeated the Judgment Day and I get it, it's Mysterio celebration, anniversary, but I feel like Damien Priest and Finn Balor needed the W. Then we got a party, Aaliyah. Well, she actually gave me a horrible present. Some old ass pants I wore in 1997. They smell bad, not Buyaka. Rhea Ripley enters the room. Now that's personal. Buddy Murphy even joked about it on Twitter. Dominic Mysterio got attacked by Rhea Ripley. It was all a setup because once Rey Mysterio left the room, he got attacked by the Judgment Day. Through the table. Party is over, bitches. It's kind of like 50-50 booking, I guess. I mean, they lost the match, but they got the revenge a couple of minutes later. I don't know. I don't know. The Judgment Day, they need a change. They need new members, maybe. I don't know. It just doesn't feel special. My least favorite moment of the night was Bianca Belair's and uh, Becky Lynch segment. They barely said anything, they just jumped straight into a brawl. Felt like just wasting a couple of minutes. Then we saw Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop. I'm having this weird feeling where I'm not sure if I remember this or not. Weren't they a tag team? like a year ago. Anyway, Alexa Bliss takes the W and then we see AJ Styles talking to Logan Paul. If you need anything, just let me know. I don't like The Miz too. I don't know you that well, but I like The Miz way less. Do everyone a favor and shut his mouth at SummerSlam. Logan Paul needs to be a heel. Who made this decision? Why? He's a natural douchebag. The only, the, the last wrestler who should be a babyface is Logan Paul. And it's not necessarily working. Crowd is kind of confused. The audience doesn't know how to feel. Half of the people are kind of cheering. Half of the people are booing. And it still feels like the audience isn't even sure how to react. So we saw Impulsive TV. He made some jokes, talked about Mrs. Balls. And the crowd, again, didn't know how to feel. He calls out the Miz, but we're seeing Maurice. And then they argue about Mrs. Balls again. She told the average size of males' uh, testicles. And the Miz has average sized testicles. Who measures their balls? And that was actually pretty funny. Mrs. Music hits and he's like, I I do. We all do. No lies here. You brush your teeth, you measure your balls, you go to sleep. Logan made fun of Mrs. Balls again, but he got attacked by Champa. So we got a two-on-one attack. Uh, yeah, Champa. I feel like his gimmick is about to change pretty soon. If Triple H is really going to be in control, I feel like one of the first people that is going to get some changes, receive some changes, is Champa, Triple H's boy. I don't think he feels 
happy with this situation. Gotta say, man, really excited about the match. Can't wait to see what Logan Paul can do in a one-on-one -on -one match. Unless we're gonna get some shenanigans, which is really possible. I love this potential tag team. They faced Alpha Academy. This was a really fun match. And like I've said, they look like a great tag team. I preferred this over Bobby Roode and Dolph Ziggler, honestly. We got a zigzag and Dolph Ziggler and AJ Styles won the match. I don't mind this, even a storyline between these two would be great. Now the issue is, both actually quite recently turned babyface, so uh, yeah, I don't know about that. We'll see in the future. I'm happy my boy Ziggy is getting some TV time. And then it was time for the main event. Obviously a six-man tag team match. But Roman Reigns was wrestling, which now honestly feels like a big deal. It shouldn't, but it does. This was a fun match. It just kind of felt unimportant because it really is. It doesn't matter. The result, nothing about this match actually matters. Madison Square Garden, I would honestly love to see a title defense from Roman Reigns or something along those lines. That would be great, but it is what it is, I guess. So during this match, we got blood. And like I've said, the commentators actually talked about it. The camera zoomed in on it. This is crazy. This is honestly crazy. We are definitely in a new era. The finish was nice. Uh, Riddle was going for the RKO, but we got Spear instead. The Tribal Chief and the Bloodline won the match. He got greeted by Seth Rollins. Uh, this is an unfinished rivalry. Can't wait for that one. Why not Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins instead of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar? So much more interesting. And the show ends with Seth Rollins attacking Riddle, making it even more personal. A curb stomp on steel steps looked pretty brutal. Uh, and that was your Monday Night Raw. So yes, it doesn't feel that different if we didn't know. The Triple H is in control, we probably wouldn't notice much of a difference, but now since we do, we can kind of see where things got changed, but like I've said, they're still following the same script, same storylines, same gimmicks, uh, it will take time, probably a few months at least. But long term, I do feel optimistic, I feel like we are going to get some major changes. Thank you for watching this video, the great one, peace, love and hugs, it's been a pleasure.